This is the English and English podcast from EnglishandEnglish.net. That's Eric. That's Brett. Let's get this thing started. I still got to try to remember .net every time. <laughs> Always lead off with English .com. teachers. Right. It keeps sending people. Said, like, no, probably 99% of websites out there that I ever use are just .com. So anytime yeah. I go and start saying .dot anything, it says .dot com is what comes out. Right. Well, that's going to change a lot. There's a lot of things they're opening like .dot biz .dot whatever simply because dot so many .dot coms are used many, at this point. Yeah. I think it's becoming less and less important though. Yeah, because like no one's following the link. You're not yeah, typing. you're not getting there just by. Or there's all other you gotta ways do is type you can mask it. You know what I mean? Like there's like you know um. And your search engine results. Like YouTube will have like your channel name isn't necessarily the URL for right. what it is. They have like a masking thing that. It'll have your display name or whatever. So I think that's more and more going to be That kind of stuff. But also, yeah, since you're typically hosted on a subset of something, so it's just blogspot slash whatever your right. name is or whatever from a lot of people. Or you can just search and find. Like being in good search results is more important. Yeah, you're, you're favoriting it's still and bookmarking. Useful. It's just not – no, I mean it's, it's obviously a thing. It's necessary, but it's just not as – I don't think – the days of people spending like a million dollars on a domain name or because the domain name yeah. in and of itself is well, no also all the companies that would want to do that already have it. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying in and of itself, like, you're not, not a lot of traffic is coming from people, like, just typing in whatever dot com without from all the things already more trying to go there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. We'll see. Like, being high on the Google rankings is where it's important, not just having a really common term as their domain. Because right, people yeah. don't just plug in something dot com. They go to right, Google, yeah, they search. search. And, and then they don't whatever say comes pots and pans. Dot com. They just right, exactly. pots and pans. pans, and then whatever comes up on the first page, regardless right. of it could be like xyzk one two three dot com, and it doesn't matter because they're not. Yeah, looking. the top of that could be you know Sears dot com looking at listings URL. for pots right. and pans. Yeah, exactly. Because they paid a lot of money. So I always see um, these shirts. I'd almost said this before the podcast. I always have to remember to wait and not say we can record things. It. Even though this might not be that funny. But I always see those I bleed <laughs> whatever, like I bleed yeah. orange and blue shirts yeah, yeah. or whatever color the college is. And all it makes me think of is that scene from uh, the other guys where he's like, You ever feel that? You know that tingle in your balls? And he's like, I think you have testicular cancer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I bleed orange and blue. I think you have um, some sort of malnourished malfunction. Right, yeah. You got a bad pancreas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's called crash. sepsis, right? Yeah, yeah. septicemia. I bleed green. That's, uh, that's called sepsis. Yeah, you have gondis. Right, yeah. Jaundis. Jaundis. Yeah. It's a J. But uh, anyway, so we, what we discussed, dude, first of all, there was this article. I think another, Dad sent it to us. Another one that... There was just a fuck. death by atomic wedgie. Did you see oh, that yes. one? <laughs> uh, I just so, saw that today. So horrible. So uh, apparently they're like, of course... Ignomious way to go. Yeah, the... the um, what was I going to say? Bunch of winners all around in that article. Because well, it was funny, a guy... Well, it's like a guy in his stepdad step got like a drunk But it was like a 30-year-old brawl, guy and like a 50 Yeah, 30 and 55 guy. or something like that. And so the stepdad threw a punch. Well, they were, punch, they were fighting. And well, apparently he the, the guy won and actually knocked him out. And, and then, then as like, ah, oh, he's going to wake up all embarrassed. He just pulled, he gave him the wedgie and pulled the underwear over his head. Like, that's what an atomic wedgie is. Right, yeah. One of those things that's only theoretical, but apparently can physically be done. Right. Where, like, you pull <laughs> the underwear sure up it's so not theoretical. high. Well, you, I mean, like, people have it, it doesn't really happen all that often. Cause right, yeah. Well, the mechanics of most people's underwear just wouldn't allow it. Probably true, but the point... But if you have a big, stretchy, whitey, tighty or something... Yeah, so anyways, he pulled it over his face to such an extent that it was, like, choked his neck. While he was unconscious. Right, the elastic thing would say he was unconscious and could not resist Right, the so I'm trying to get the guy for, like, murder. And I'm like, give me a break. Like, obviously, manslaughter. manslaughter. He didn't kill the well, guy. I thought that's what it was. It was manslaughter they were giving him. Well, that's what he's trying to do. But they're trying, if, like, if he gets convicted of murder, like, second-degree murder, like, unpremeditated murder, then he'll go to prison for, like, 35 years or something. And it's yeah. like, it's, it should be obvious to anyone. His intent he was not intend to kill to kill. He's the only person in the history of the world to die from a wedgie. So right. you can't say that that was that like he was dedicated to. Many young right. men's social exactly. life die from a wedgie. Their soul <laughs> died yeah. inside. Exactly. Many, many nerds' dignities died to the atomic wedgie, but this is the first man to actually die. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like many, so many young men before his time. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But that was still pretty Yeah, funny. that was funny. I would have thought that that was ridiculous. Yeah, kind of sad way to go. <laughs> but I mean, I guess in reality, it was it just, yeah, the, the guy the was Nicky, unconscious and somebody covered man. his airways. It's a, wedgie. It's a Melvin. It's a yeah. wedgie. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Calls him a Melvin. He gave him a Melvin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? It's called a wedgie. No, it's a Melvin. Right, yeah. We'll have to put that. No, man, I'm still saying. shocked. He needs to re upload those videos. Because oh, the, um, the ultimate man. Because yeah. whatever, they're out of the algorithm now. Like, if they're years old, they're not getting a lot of residual clicks, so they're not getting pr- 
promoted mm-hmm. on the sidebar, and they only have like four thousand views on a few of them. And they're like these things, these are one of the funniest little skits I've ever seen. Yeah, they're pretty old school and low low budget, yeah, but, but they're, they're still funny. Like they're, yeah, they should at least have but a like, few hundred thousand views. Yeah, look at some point. some guys early YouTube pioneers videos of like making these funny humorous videos on the. And he doesn't really do that anymore. No, I think he's got a real job. He's like a real estate agent now, but he's been doing all sorts of stuff in the film industry for years. And then because he's even got Kevin Heffernan in like one of the guys from Broken um, Lizard. Broken Lizard. He's got that old Indian guy that's in some of the Judd Apatow movies. Right. In these like nothing. He obviously knew these people and was doing them on the side before. But what was most fascinating about it is he was getting them involved in these like internet skit things before. Now everybody does that with like Funny or Die or stuff. Right. Yeah. And this was years ago. It just his never took off the ground for whatever reason, like because it didn't have enough of an alliance with other people. Other, we'll, we'll put those on the website. But yeah, he's got the greatest line in there, which is in all those where he plays like a, a parody version of himself, like yeah, trying to be the, the ultimate, ultimate man. man. It's the ultimate man. The game of life is rigged, <laughs> but when you're the ultimate man, God cheats in your yeah. favor. You know, <laughs> when you're an ultimate man, God cheats in your favor. <laughs> right? Yeah. Remember, <laughs> the game of life is rigged, <laughs> but when you're an ultimate man, God cheats in your favor. I think it's actually a paraphrasing of some other famous quote. Prop. The guy says, like, something got, when, and God will cheat in your favor when you do something with it. Right, yeah. It probably is, but it's a good quote. I can't, I don't remember the original it source. It is awesome. I'll credit it to Nicky Nick of The Ultimate Man. <laughs> right, yeah. Okay, whenever I quote it. Cause he God cheating it. in your favor. Yeah. Just great line. You're yeah. an ultimate man. God, God cheats. cheats in your favor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, other than that, one of our topics. Another interesting article here that's uh, not hu- is humorous, but just kind of fascinating. There was like a study, uh, well, two of them actually. On there, a couple of, on Melvin's actually. <laughs> Melvin's. No, on Internet Cafe, uh, Chinese, more oh, drama yeah, of the, the Chinese. Oh, dying, dying in the cafes. No, a woman who gave birth they just in the bathroom leave. and then went back to surfing the Internet. What did she do with the baby? It was holding a bloody baby in her arms. So, what? again, one of the cleaning ladies or employees, just like the other guy, was like, Came up to him and was like, he's passed out, he's dying, and then called the police or whatever. Like, no, this person, like, called social services or the, you the know, whatever their these ambulance thing. Like, I guess they just, they it's, don't have any other way to, I don't know. I don't know what's so It's not so, even, like, a weird... Like, we have plenty of weird pathological types, reoccurring pathological problems in our country. But it's yeah. funny that every country has slightly different versions of what it manifests as, you know? Like, there's always crazy people I don't in know, every I don't, That's the only one that, like, you don't see in other countries. Like, you see drug addictions, gambling, you see all that stuff... And yeah. substance and all different kinds of addictions. Well, we get it in our own way in some sense, I think, but it tends to be more with shut-ins than internet cafes. But it's never but so... still, to... you're not having people dying and giving birth without, like, calling the, the hospital and stuff. It happens, but not necessarily because they were too busy using the computer. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. That, I don't know. That's the only places, like Korea and um, China. Because you certainly get plenty of, like, shut-ins or people who just do nothing but watch TV all day and then, like, in order... But they still eat... In. They yeah. still go to bathroom to shit. Well, that's, I guess that's the thing. In America, they just keep eating. You get fat asses. Whereas yeah. in China, they just don't eat. <laughs> or Korea or whatever. For some reason, like in America, they order KFC in or something and become these huge lard asses and you need a crowbar to get them off the couch right. or a forklift to get them to the hospital. But in in China and Korea and the Asian countries, they just starve themselves. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Some weird, weird difference there. <laughs> I don't get it. No one has explained this to me. Yeah. I'm trying to look up Melvin on Nervid Dictionary. <laughs> See if that's an accepted term. I think it or... is. I don't think they made it up completely. No, no. But it's not, I don't know if I'm There was another one, though. This is not Wi-Fi. in the funny, but just in the interesting article. That somebody was doing experiments uh, about animal psychology stuff, experiments, and it was this one with rats, and they were proving that rats could feel empathy. Okay. And they did an experiment. Basically, like, rats were given the choice to, they could open, they had, like, two latches they could open. If they opened one, it would close, it would seal the other so they can only do one if they and opened what if they opened one latch oh, it would latch. Okay. seal the other like a right. mechanism that they could figure out but it had to be one and so they had to spend exclusive. some time yeah. figuring out how to work this mechanism and doing one would always lock the other and yeah. one was a latch that would raise a platform so that this other rat that had to tread water that was swimming caught in water it would drain the water or the other latch would give them food and like chocolate, which is like okay. one of their favorite foods. So they could so either they, get fat or save another rat. Yeah, and they would more often than not save the other rat, especially if they had been one of the ones treading water in the previous experiment. So, so they determined they correlated that. Like, oh, I remember how often, shitty that was. Right, yeah, <laughs> more often that they had been in that situation, they would immediately go to save the other rat versus 
going for the food. Right. So they're not necessarily smart enough to just understand, but they can learn. That right. They but have. they, so the they were. Was there. They were. Yeah. Exactly. It was more of a notion response. They were initially more often than not, even with no prior experience, instinctually inclined to go to yeah. the distressed animal versus the food, a distressed animal of the same species. Then they were also increasingly more likely to go to the distressed animal what first. What they didn't tell you is that once they let it out of the water box, they raped the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> ate it for eight yeah, like, This rat nutrients. is more food than this yeah, exactly. chocolate. It's a one pound rat or a little nougat of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and Melvin is like, there's all these sorts of random weird definitions. But it says, um, what is it? They're all different too, so there's no, but there was one that was like, of similar terms it says wedgie atomic wedgie camel toe mervin hanging wedgie one hanging of the definitions wedgie. is a wedgie in the front <laughs> like you pull, a, <laughs> pull like a front wedgie that sucks because yeah. there's nowhere for it to go right. well, in fact the whole wedgie thing is that it wedges it in your ass crack <laughs> right you yeah the front it's just smashing your nuts <laughs> it's not pleasant no matter what the frontal wedgie instead of the underpants being up your butt crack they ride up into the labia <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what the gender you're yeah having. right a wedgie in the front, also sometimes called a Minerva for girls. <laughs> <laughs> front <Classy>. wedgie. <laughs> yeah, classy. He's referred to it. This one says it. <laughs> They're all different. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's a Melvin. <laughs> yeah, it's a Melvin. <laughs> the other part in those well, going back to not to spoil man, everything else but one that you love so much like nobody's saying you're gay and, yeah. but it's always like he just called me gay hey man he's like don't nobody's... be gay you be gay and he's like I'm not gay look no one's saying, saying you're gay, gay. <laughs> right yeah exactly. he just did like five <laughs> seconds ago <laughs> right yeah <laughs> yeah those videos are hilarious right they're very cheesy but they're great for it well, yeah we'll put it in the, the show we'll, we'll link them at some point we have to use terms like show notes to sound like we have a real operation we're talking about what they're, yeah, they are I guess we'll just right, link right. them in the post <laughs> no, I'm marking that down now so don't forget actually ultimate man links alright so next up we had I tried to um, compile a list of the world's most awesome rebukes which yeah. is hard to find and these will not be presented in any order of order. importance or They're greatness just, awesome. just a length a group of awesomeness right and the because the one that made me think of it was in the end of the movie 300 right where they're basically obviously they're gonna die you know of course they're gonna fight anyway right but, and the one like hunchback guy who um betrayed them because he couldn't be part of the thing he was like and you may you live forever right, yeah. <laughs> like it was the worst fate to right. live forever with his cowardice than right to, yeah uh, than to die with the right like or die with the you wouldn't, they wouldn't even let him die with the rest of them at that right point. yeah exactly. like, no, you get to live <laughs> yeah you get your uh your life is so lame that um it's a worse pun- worst your honor is so to, cheap that you will yeah it's a worse punishment with to live enemies, out your pathetic, die with your yeah, friends, your pathetic yeah. life and then the other one i found so then i started looking up for like cool rebukes like that and yeah. there's only, so they're hard to find because they're not they never title them like that so you have yeah, to search people don't use rebuke as a word anymore exactly. so, so you have to look under either insults search. or just sayings or, but they're not necessarily insults per se no no they're they're cutting a person down who's done something wrong it's right. a rebuke but, right, like, rebuke. It's but they just a, don't they don't cut like, right. finding people who organize their quotes right has been the problem yeah exactly <laughs> but the, another one was um, Death Wish 2 where the guy he finally tracks down the guy and isolates him from one of his well just one of the guys yeah one of the gang members like, he sees a cross on his neck and he's like do you believe in Jesus and he's like yes yes I do yeah and he's like well you're gonna meet him <laughs> <laughs> and just, just blows guns him, him away yeah. <laughs> well, and then there's the TJ uh, the Thomas Jefferson quote of um I don't remember the exact wordage but it was like talking about people who um prefer freedom over liberty and it was oh, like, no, comfort over liberty. No, that's, that's Sam Adams. Sorry. May your chains rest lightly upon you. That one? That was Sam Adams? That was Sam Are Adams. Are you positive? I looked it up to be sure. Because I want to get the whole quote. I have it written down right here. All right, we'll read it. It says, may your chains set lightly upon you, and may posterity forget that you ever were our countryman. Yeah. Well, well, actually, crouch actually, down and lick the hand yeah, that feeds like, you. And may for those of you that prefer, the... prefer comfort and... Um, You're right, it is Sam Adams. And, um, I don't know why I thought it was TJ. It's like, for those of you who prefer comfort... And wealth over the animating contest, you know, for, contest freedom. for freedom. You know, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsels or arms. Right. Crouch down and lick the hand which feeds you. May your chain set lightly upon you, and may posterity forget that you are a countryman. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's exactly. Like, Damn. It's a cold ass honky. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, but it's it's better because anytime they tell you like you're worthless, it's not even worth killing. It's like depart, yeah, enjoy just, your just, slavery, yeah, just and leave. Forget that we were ever in the same right. species, <laughs> right, or yeah. country. 
<laughs> yeah. Which is awesome. And there's a similar one where like, we're going back from... Okay. It's, a, you know, a little archaic and actually going back to... Um, like Another thing that always came up in the rebuke, when you're looking for cool rebukes, it just ended up being Bible verses all the time. Right, because you know? it's, it's like, the only place that people use the word rebuke. Right, right but all, most of them were in the dumb ways that they were Bible verses about when it's the right time to rebuke someone right. in order to teach them. And it's basically a bunch of people who can't actually rebuke somebody fretting that it's the wrong time to rebuke. Like, oh, I right. shouldn't say anything harsh. It's like, this is what it's become. This is what... Basically, the new church, you know, like, teachings of today. But there is some good rebukes in the Bible, actually. But I, the only one I could find on short notice, it's a little esoteric, but it's like yeah. when God was telling Job, you know, like, oh, you're going to talk to me? Like, yeah, you know, you're going to question you, the order things? Talks all, like, right, yeah, he says, now gird up your loins like a man. And you and I will ask you, and you will instruct me. So yeah, basically, it's like an archaic you way of saying, like, the universe yeah, it was like, yeah, exactly. And that's basically but what that was like an eight paragraph rebuke. Right, it was like an eight paragraph rebuke. But if you could turn that, like, if, if it would be quote. like in a modern rap battle, somebody said, "Where were you when I made my first million dollars?" Right. You know, like, oh, you're going to teach me how to do things. Well, that reminds me of the one where the guy. Oh, that yeah, that was a good one because it made me think of in um. The movie, The Ghost in the Darkness. Yeah. Michael Douglas's characters are playing Remy, the hunter Remington, and the guy says yeah. something to him, and he's like, I could tell you that the smell of fresh yeah. blood on the water is making right, this, yeah. and I could tell you tell that about how he knows everything about, about everything lions. Is what's going to happen and why it's bad, and he's like, but I don't want to answer you, right. because when you question me, you're telling me that I don't know what I'm doing. Right, yeah. That's a great one, <laughs> so If you ever have a problem with that, speak up right now. Right, yeah. If not, good. Then I guess we all agree. <laughs> right, yeah. That's a good one too. That's a great yeah. review. I didn't Same even kind think of thing about, about like, oh, you're questioning my that, knowledge. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. yeah, I could tell you that, but I don't want to answer you. Because yeah. when you question me, you're saying that I don't know what I'm doing. Right. So there was great. another one that was uh, from an old movie that I barely remember. Probably more something like my dad, my like dad or something. No, it was like an old James Cagney movie. Okay. But I found the quote again, and, and it was like, uh, it's, it's a good quote. He's like, "You'll slap me." Like somebody said, "Like I will slap you," and he's like, "You'll slap me." You slap me to dream, you better wake up and apologize. You know, what he said. Like, <laughs> in searching, I found some other quotes. It isn't exactly a rebuke, but this just falls under badass quotes. Where yeah. some guy was like, I think this was like Civil War era or even before. And some guy was like, he got shot. He was like, oh, yeah. general. No, and he was like, damn, damn man, man kills, kills me and lives. Yeah, and then he, he killed the guy. Confederate general who yeah, he ended up got shot through by so like a, dis, a dissenting uh, like, no damn subordinate. Man kills he says, me no damn man, man killed me and lives. Shoot and he shot him. him. Yeah. But then he ends up living, I think. No, no, the guy lived. Who, the, the joke was, he says, no man who kills me gets to live, but he lived. He lived. He shot, yeah. Yeah, the guy who said, no man kills me lives. Oh, yeah. He killed the other guy, but Right, yeah, that survived the bullet. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's still a great quote. And there was also like the one from Davy Crockett, you know, uh, you may all go to hell and I will go to Texas or whatever. <laughs> right, like, yeah. When he lost. Yeah, I read that one. When he, that was like when they voted in somebody else instead of him in Tennessee, I think, where he yeah. originally was from. And then he ended up down in Texas where eventually he fought in the... Um, I'm glad I thought of that one. Goes to Texas Mark, War of Independence, right? And fought in the Alamo, I if so, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. My history's shit. Yeah, but I, I remember, I'm glad I remember that one from Ghost in the Darkness because it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to answer you. <laughs> yeah, because when you question me, <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. Right. Good stuff. I want to find that on like a YouTube video now and watch that part again. Yeah. But yeah, that's like, we'll come up with other ones later on. as do a uh, list of badass, just bad, general badass quotes. General quotes. But also like from other movies. There's lots of good right, ones movies that I just don't remember quotes. right now. And I couldn't right. look them up because it's impossible. But those kind of ones where somebody like questions you and you'd be like, wait a minute. Yeah, you just shut them down. Shut them down, you know, kind of thing. And like those are, uh, there's good ones out there. But people don't use the word rebuke anymore. You can't find it in internet searches. Right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they need, we need to so it goes. dumb down our language. Right, apparently. Speak the language of the proles. The, the English is speak too much English. Right. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh. Yeah. So anyways, what else we got? Well, I got the one thing. Um, we one were talking thing. about this, and I figured it was a good thing a while back, and I was figured it was a, a good Melvin? thing to put in the um, a Melvin. We were talking about, talking about the Melvin back. techniques. We were talking about multiple, <laughs> multiple Melvins. The Mega Melvin is also a time. <laughs> now, what if you do like the double wedgie? Like you get them from the side and your front and back. It's what, what possible. Is that that? A, a, I think it would just end up as a regular wedgie. It's just a super. It's just a super wedgie. It's no. just all what. Well, well normal like, wedgies, you just pull up the back. Right. But, but either way, you're just still just a wedgie because all you're just getting wedging is, it into the right. wedging into the the groinal and butt yeah. crack <laughs> yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, yeah. Smashing whatever gym. It's only becomes yeah, unique present. when you manage to like get it over the head in atomic <laughs> right. style, or or do some other like thing. You atomic know. Style. Right, yeah. <laughs> there are a few variants like the. The Tijuana wedgie, 
Which is your wedgie and then pour hot sauce down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Take it off. laughs> or the the shady sandpaper special. You pour some grit down in there and then just start torquing like the, the bowling ball thing. Yeah, do the bowling ball yeah, thing. Like yeah, in uh, it, Big Lebowski. Right, right, yeah. the, 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 the polishing bag. Yeah, do the polisher. <laughs> that's, that's the polisher. Yeah, the rock tumbler. The rock tumbler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Messes up your shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, oh, all your balls are all smashed up against <laughs> your head. Oh, this, everything Rich, is abrased. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So what were you saying right before that? Before I went back to Melvin's. This is going to be a huge tonal shift now. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, this was more along the... i got to be careful because we might get into dangerous philosophical and serious debate, which we've always tried to say, like, wait a minute, back <laughs> off. Right. But this is the... Um, Warning. We should uh, just have a trigger warning. Sound yeah, this is a trigger warnings. Like click, click, click. <laughs> yeah, click, click. Trigger warnings. Start now. Clap. Right. Timestamp. Uh, but no, it was. Um, Here, Muffet, you fragile fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Muffet, you dumb fucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, we're talking about like uh, how all marriages are prenups at this point. Oh right, right. And how like some people don't get it, and they they always you know they like say, oh man, you're so commitment phobic and all this jazz and like all these things, and they forget that like if you ask people for a prenup or anybody finds out that oh this relationship they're gonna get a prenup, they think it's so weird. Well, they a say, lot of people think that it is right, or like a woman would be like, he asked for a prenup, and right, they'd be like, why are you planning, what? Why are you planning for a divorce? And it's like, well. All marriages are at this point. All you're asking because, for is for your specific version of the marriage contract. Because, exactly, the marriage contract is a legal document well, that's guaranteeing that the difference. state will take certain actions right. in regards to your relationship in legal sense. on yeah. its ongoing basis and in its well, termination. That's what it is. Like, in, traditionally speaking, like you could get married just because it was just like... Because the priest be, said right, that there was no... Married. Because your family said it was okay yeah, so, and I mean, the priest... Nowadays there's marriage and then there's the, the legal marriage, which is already a legal contract. So the idea right. of treating a prenuptial agreement is any different is stupid because right. well, it's, it's just not even different just that. Yeah. it's not even just that people are it's in, it's stupid to be hypocritical and treat a prenuptial, prenuptial agreement as some sort of like what the fuck or on a weirdness. different sort of level as a nuptial agreement right. this is literally but just, it's also weird that they don't acknowledge I mean it's not weird because I get it right. people but there's no reason to that the wedding acknowledge. itself is just a different kind they don't acknowledge yeah. that the wedding has already got a nuptial agreement a legal well, nuptial a agreement is. in which the government is now legally your third party. Yeah. You were not marrying that man or that woman. You were marrying that woman and the state. Yeah. Because that that's the state will always have a right to interfere with your proceedings from that point forward. Yeah, because I mean it is a, it's a three person contract. Right. It's a three person contract in into. which it, all education goes to that's one why I party. Never gave a shit about quote unquote gay marriage because I was yeah. like I don't give a shit what they do, but why are you fighting for your right to get a government involved in yeah. a two party? The only reason it becomes an issue is because the government actually tries to incentivize you getting involved with them right. by giving tax breaks, making it hard for you right. to like have certain work benefits and everything right. like that when you're not involved in their third part or in their three way. It's all dumb at, to begin with because in reality, right. like we said, you should, they should just get rid of all that. Well, situation the government shouldn't be totally. trying to decide what life choices people make like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like whether or not you have, you're quote unquote married or not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's stupid. But yeah, but, people don't don't recognize. But from just a sociological different. standpoint, what's fascinating to me is that you know, mostly women, of course, because right now the women are the ones who tend to benefit more from the current nuptial contract, i.e., right. the marriage license. At least it's for set the past, up that like, way. At least since you know the sexual revolution, or honestly, it's been growing since the 1900s when right. changes in the way divorces were handled and everything started to change. Right. You know, ever since the industrialization of the country, basically, these things started to change slowly and then ever more rapidly. But the and ever since basically the idea that the states took over the, the law of marriages, like marriage used to just be a common law thing, basically meaning the people had a general idea about what a man's and a woman's rights were in a marriage. Right. And each society. But it wasn't that thing. It never was really about like the rights, like trying to protect. You know what I mean? Right. It but it about... wasn't like legal rights in which the state had a right to interfere right. to justify rights. It was just basically that every social group, whether it was Regular America, the Mormons or the Pennsylvanians or like different groups had an idea of how a person should behave when they're in a marriage. But that was just social pressures, yeah. you know, and um, then religious um, or traditional rules, you know. Yeah, but regardless, I mean, the point, regardless, the point is that, yeah. The point is, is nobody wonders now, like they, they go in and then they ask, wonder why people are 
changing the way they behave about marriage, why men are staying out of it more than yeah. usual, or why people get worried about it, or why women change their behavior so much after they get married. Right. And it's like, because you don't acknowledge the fact, you don't realize that well, realize all marriages... They don't realize that or incentives are important and what they're actually incentivizing. Right. But not only that, that every marriage is like, it's not a marriage, no marriage is really totally... Like, if you would think that a man doesn't love you if he asks for a prenup, well, that's what you're asking for him. Right, yeah. As soon as you ask him to marry you on paper, you are asking him to say, I'm going to sign a document. You don't don't love me if you don't, or if you're asking me to sign this contract, it must mean you don't love me. Or that but you then they, they go the exact opposite way and say, if you don't sign my contract, right. you, don't you don't love, love me. me. Right, yeah. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways, exactly. <laughs> and so that's what's funny. And it's just, it's an uh, unexamined thing. Because all they're doing is pulling one off the shelf and using the, the Yeah, just because it's a prefab form. contract, yeah, it's, it's, still it's still the same still thing. It's still the same thing. It's still the same in legal principle. You were, you were saying, I will not love you or this isn't a real relationship unless you sign this paper that gives me powers to, break, to get something out of us after right. a breakup. And regardless of, of who stands to gain from right. either one, the point is you have to logically, re, you know, reconcile it, the fact that they're the same. That's thing. what you're doing. Yeah, yeah you have that's to either way is the same. Recognize and they're you know both different contracts. In some sense, I'm. If it were more well, equitable, I think people I'd be always assume, fair to do that. The, the, I think one of the preconceptions is that pre, the people assume certain things of a prenup when it, and not of a marriage when it's the exact opposite. A prenup exactly. presumes nothing. Within the some bounds of certain laws and certain states, a prenup can almost be whatever you want. That's right. the part that you just get to decide That's, what your legal agreement is going to be, right. whereas the marriage is whatever the state has already decided it's going right. to be. It's one size fits all legal so document almost, that shoves everybody into the same arrangement. When you say prenup, people always think it means that. The guy is having a contract that means he doesn't have to give anything in a divorce. Well, that's which is not always even the case. Well, it's only become that simply because all women well, already have a well, prenup because, because the marriage the license is the women's already, prenup. Yeah, it already sets a specific. All women amount. already have is, their essential legal contract. Just, yeah, covered. if you don't agree that one size fits all is, is good, then all then all of a sudden you're you're just a like, weirdo. Yeah, yeah. A weirdo. Or I mean, that's a whole different selfish, that's a whole different dynamic in today's society. That if you buck against the trend in any way, if well, you don't accept the one size fits all, don't accept the one size fits all marriage particular. Right, but I'm saying like I think that aspect aspect of it is just because our society well, is ever more humans. conformist well humans. in human in general but yeah like yeah but, but it's um, bad now because that in, in that particular arena it's yeah. bad just it's all the more bad in that particular yeah. arena because it's never been questioned it's right. been accepted that that's how it should be but nobody realized how vast a departure this stuff has been from what and what they're was. really saying and, and what they're really saying there. and what they're really demanding of the parties involved right. you know yeah exactly and so it's just funny to me how um, just in a human dynamic thing I was thinking about that because it was like you know some people it's like you watch people and they'll be mad when like they think like oh I'm not going to make a commitment or whatever and right. it's like some of it it's like you don't because they don't realize what they're actually asking to them right. it's just give the commitment because that's how you show you love because that's what's been drilled into their you heads you can do a commitment without going and getting a marriage license right yeah you say I vow to stay right with you. like yeah. if, if I give my word that's right. all that should matter well that's all you're giving anyway Right. You can the rest divorce, is people. just it's sticking my. The rest is just sticking my hand under the a, or my the head under the axe well, the of the admit, government. Yeah, the emotional commitment aspect of it is always just based on your word. Right. So all you're really doing is being. I don't trust your word. I need you to say, set up consequences for right. yourself. Right. I need you to say if yeah. I don't trust you to actually love me. I need you to say if I decide I don't at some point, I or I, if I decide that I don't love you at some point, right, the government will step in and start kicking you. Right. right? <laughs> it's like well, imagine why people don't want to do that. Yeah. Huh. Because, like, can you imagine if that arrangement was set up for any other life arrangement? Right. You know, how much it would just kill it. Like, imagine yeah, if your job, like, if, if you had to sign something when you were signing up for a job, said, hey, I'm hiring you. Right. You're going to get only these things out of it. I'm going to get a lot of things out of it. Right. And then, if you decide to leave, not only do you not have a job anymore, but I'm going to get half of your shit and we're going to like start beating you with a legal like thing. Yeah, like the army. <laughs> And then... But, but they moreover, the if thing. we decide to fire you, you the exact same consequences happen. Right. You lose half your shit, and right. um, you start getting kicked by the government. Ends it, then it ends badly for you. Right? Yeah. So, like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Kind of contract. And you imagine why people get freaked out. Obviously, by that. it's worth saying for the cheap seats. It, obviously, that these don't necessarily always apply to men. If it, it can happen to be worse for a woman if they're in a strange position. Right. There are always but exceptions. Point but the point is, any time you have it where one party could be in that position is fucked up. That's the right. whole point. That's the whole point, too. It's traditionally been men. It's traditionally really been men in the bad end of this deal Either since the 60s, 70s screwed, or something. Why would you want that system if you can set up for one person, whether it's because they make more money or whatever? Right. Yeah. But yeah, traditionally it has been men. 
Right. Well, then at least since the sexual revolution. And that's why they set it up originally is because they're worried that women, since they didn't traditionally have their own jobs or anything, that they would get screwed over if a guy just decided that he didn't want to be married anymore right. for no fault. Well, of what's hers. so funny is that uh, and that I may mean, have been an issue. That happened in the 50s. But- but, but it's not happen, but even in more ancient things, it was typically assumed that the honorable thing to do was provide for the person you're right. putting Right, but I mean, away. then people realize eventually it's still that honor is necessarily going to protect everyone. So they're like, okay, and, this, and I'm not even saying this, this should be. It just, right. This is what happened. And right. then they realize, like, well, what if they don't want to be honorable? Then this person who didn't do anything wrong is getting screwed over. So they're like, okay, well, we'll make these legal protections. Right. And that was but their But they're still not acknowledging process. that's what it is. It's not, you're not saying, oh... You love me, so let's sign this. You're well, saying, I don't trust you in the end. doesn't exist anymore so. either. There's no particularly, particular reason why being divorced is worse for a man or a woman other than the way they've, they've set it up. Right, you know, especially like not in a world where both people have good jobs. You know? Just be a housewife for 10 years and not get a job. That was the decision that they made. Whereas maybe you know, 100 years ago, there weren't really a lot of options for them if they right. didn't want to do that. But Yeah. So it, I mean, not to go down too much... The rabbit hole of which one is the more equitable way to set up because that's not the aspect well, I'm talking I'm not about. Even saying yeah. which one is more equitable. I'm just saying right. this is the that's what I'm saying. I understand that, but saying irrelevant of that aspect of it is the aspect that that people don't acknowledge or wonder why they they're like why are people freaked out? It's like because you're not looking at and acknowledging. Right. You're asking this person in order to marry you. You're asking them to sign a prenup, and that right. would freak you out. Of course, it's going to freak them out. You don't call it a prenup because it's just the marriage license, but it is already a legal document with terms and conditions assigned to it, with breach of contract rules, with government oversight rules, with duties and responsibilities rules. Yes, there's some benefits potentially, but you can have minor tax benefits. You can have like like potential benefits in your prenup too if you want. Right. Yeah. Necessarily all negatives. The point is not that. Either one necessarily has to be good or bad, but you at least have to realize that they're the same thing. That's what thing. you're asking for. Right, yeah. and I do think that they're set up based very flawed for no other reason than there's no reason to have the government involved at all. Right. You know? It would be better if you – I mean like I can understand people saying I don't want to get married if there's not some condition that I get provided for. But then that, that's what the original idea of a prenup was for. Right. We we're going to get married. Well, also for me, the idea that when you have just a promise parties, is not enough. I want a contract. Parties, just like with a business contract, like when you go to – there was like this Marxist idea that if any – between like a, an employer and their employee that someone's getting screwed somehow in the interaction. Right, yeah. That's not really the case. If I want to sell something and the other person wants to buy it, there's definitely a situation where you can both end up with what you want. That's right, the yeah. point. That's the so, point. And that could happen with a marriage too. Right, yeah. To that's be. an interesting aspect. But when you have a the third party – The whole Marxist party, idea of all transactions are, are somehow zero victimizing. Sum game. Well, they're all a zero-sum game and somehow victimizing, right? Right. Yeah, and I don't even that's know if that's exclusively Marx. It's, it's not. I mean, that it, it's Marx is from the perspective of economic not, interactions. Right. No, but, but it's definitely a leftist. It's almost like a feminist now for, with for, any interaction where there's a man and a woman, like the woman's getting screwed somehow. So there right, has to be yeah. these legal protections. I mean, well, if you're doing it right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's not right. to get too ridiculous, but that's the way they look at it. It's right. All interactions are rape. Right, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> well, you know, sorry, nature, the goddess, but mother guy had designed the earth that way. The point is that it's not the case. You can yeah. have just like the sale issue we were talking about where I sell an item. You can have an interaction with two people that ends up being beneficial for both. And that's what the whole idea with marriage was. You come right. Well, but like now said, when you add the third party, it becomes almost impossible for because, everyone to get Because the third party only wants what it wants out of it. Right. Which may just be filling some ideological right. mandate. But it only wants what it wants out of it. It doesn't right. care about your actual relationship. Yeah. And also, like I said, I don't and it's begrudge the idea. And it's three people to get exactly what they want out of a, exactly. two, of a two-way agreement. Right. It's a never you know possible. I mean? Yeah. Especially when the person modifying the agreement is not the two people involved in it. You or know? suffering from the direct consequences. Right, yeah. Like, so I don't mind the idea of people who want to get prenups getting prenups, either man or woman. Let's say the marriage contract through the state was no longer a thing. Yeah. But many people who were about to get married decided, you know what, we will each come up with a contract saying – this is what we plan to do should this dissolve. Right. I mean, the whole point of what we're that's saying just is that there's on, no in, such in, thing as a prenup. There right. is just contracts. Right. You know what I mean? So and, there's no point talking about... And, they, all, and you must also... Saying, the other thing I'm saying, I want to adjust this contract that they just came up with for one size fits all. Right. I don't think one size does fits all. So if we're going to end right, the so contract, contract, I want it to be adjusted. That's all and you're that, saying. And the other thing is that people freak out about the idea about prenups without acknowledging the fact that you're already in a contract. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you're already asking this other person to sign a contract. Just contracts and addendums or whatever. Right, yeah. So all they're doing is making an amendment to a contract. All they're trying to use the same language to say, your contract, use of a contract is crazy, a but my use of a contract yeah, is perfectly okay. sane. Or, or yours means that you don't love me, but me wanting to sign my contract, or you, wanting you to sign my contract means that you don't love me. Right, you know, yeah, you know, exactly. You can't have it both ways. Right, exactly. 
Well, anyway, we should get off this dour, uh, yeah, you know, exactly. trigger laden topic. <laughs> trigger warning trigger over. Trigger warning o- ending. Right, yeah. This has been a test of the trigger warning. All right, we'll have to see um, Huge Swift in, in uh, watch this segue. Bam! We'll have to see about uh, Mad Shabam, Max. Bam! It's all Shabam. blown out. <laughs> right, yeah. uh, Mad Max is getting positive reviews. You know, I looked at it and honestly, like I don't. There's a difference between because the the worry was I read a lot of stuff that said we talked about this last one, right? Yeah, that's why I'm bringing it up again because okay. I just I knew we had talked about it. But the movie just it came out, podcast, and it'll be relevant. And it looks promising. The, the worries that I've had all along were that the movie would just be kind of like Transformer style ridiculous. Like yeah. a bunch of just so heartless, most of reviews, not heartless, but soulless action. Right, the reviews really say it's not forward. going that way, at least to my right. viewers, and of course, I don't think with their brains, so I may disagree, yeah. but that's positive. And it, the only thing is, it does seem to go the way that we were kind of afraid. Like he's like a secondary. He's almost a secondary character, character. which is not even necessarily a bad not necessarily thing. Not necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of well. In the other movies, he somebody said in one of the reviews that was kind of they said it was consistent with the other movies, which with I Road somewhat dis- disagree with. Yeah. Just because in the other two movies, Road Warrior and Thunderdome, he was a very silent character. But he was still the main. Character. He was still. It followed. Well, I, mean, I get the, the action. Followed I get him. the point. Like they, they're, they're really the story follows this atoll in the desert, and he shows up there, right? And like this, so exactly. I mean, the story is always about a lone stranger wandering into a situation and then dealing with it. Right. You know, and or this is the riding same guy. Along. So I mean, and, and like I said, in and of itself, that's not even a negative. It's just no. a weird aspect. Right. One because if you the movies called Mad Max, you're going to right. See about so, of course, now I'll have to say it. I'll have to see it. I should say before I. Yeah, I'm gonna go pass see judgment, it. but. What's interesting, of course, is a little tempest in a teapot came up over like the whole feminine the, aspect, feminist, feminist aspect of yeah. Jean and mind logs, which apparently, after further reading, found out that what it was is she was brought in to talk to the actresses playing About the sex, sex slaves. slaves. Yeah, and that's what they said. Okay, well, some people thought that she was brought in as like a writing consultant, so it could be a tome on feminist things. And of course, they didn't see the movie. Well, I, what so I read is that it was supposed it out to be that they had contacted her to get some sort of. Per, just a perspective on sex slavery. It still seems and one, weird. I didn't know what she had to do with that. Right. So but like, I didn't know that she. I don't know. Maybe she dabbles it. in it more than yeah, I thought. She and dabbles a, and in again, sex slaves. I was slave. just like, okay, <laughs> if, she, if she's actually talking to people who were sex slaves, then. But then my worry was like, I don't want to go see it like some somber movie about Pre- sex slavery. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I don't want any twelve years of Mad Max sex. Slave. It seems. I want to go see an but action. It does. Even if it was realistic and not necessarily from a feminist angle, I'm like, that may just kill the Kill the, the buzz. Vibe. Yeah. yeah, if you make this yeah. really like depressing movie. What it seems movie. like is it seems like it was just a bad ploy of marketing. Yeah. Because they wanted, it was, they wanted to, to get they wanted to get their social justice warrior creds and be like, hey, right. look, we even brought in a consultant. For a movie that would otherwise be like perceived movie, as just a mindless dude mindless flick. mindless testosterone yeah. dude flick. They basically so they wanted to get the women. They wanted to get the women into the seats, and they thought the best way to do that was to do some token throwaway to, to right. social so justice issues. All, 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 which all, it seems like it's really plenty not of movies. Which is, that's good, funny. but I mean, it's still it's a dumb thing that that's what Hollywood has to do because like this kind of movie with this premise. Well, whatever. But like somebody did who made the articles talking about that, right. or championing the fact that look, the vagina monologues woman was in the consulting. Right. Like the director might have done that, and not care that it went right. anybody it heard not about. Mean it. anything to him? Be like, oh, let's get someone in here to make sure because I've never talked to a sex. So right, sure and I need some acting coaches weird aspect for these people to, it, to know how, how it messes with with their right, minds. Or not, or I'm completely but yeah, because like that kind of storyline has been done in every action movie. Like they say, like these testosterone dude fests that are just all anti women, yeah, like and they're almost they always about women. getting like the woman saved, you know. Right. And of course, now that's evil. That's taboo. Saving the woman is bad. But they were always about how the bad men are hurting women, and the good men are going to go save them. And that's still what this is about. It, right? But. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So they're avoiding that. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. I think what went on here is they got her and other things and touted that to semi-avoid the backlash of, of oh, just movie, another of Mad Max the saving these damsels in the strip. The so they put Charlize Theron and these other ones, which I understand then why some of like the, the groups said like, oh, it's getting feminized or something like that. But at the same time, I think they blew it out because main reason I think that is because Because you see that stuff groups, so often too. And... Well, and also those, I mean like, that stuff definitely does happen. There's a lot of preachy bullshit about leftist type stuff in a lot of media. Yeah. And um, and there is a lot of preachy bullshit about other ideologies as well. Now, media has been used to, to preach in every form, but it's not right. always the wrong use for media. No, I mean, it's it just needs to be trying to get honest their about what it's across. doing. Yeah, about. that's the difference, is when right. you're not honest about it. 
Right. Like when when you're trying to tell us the problem with most leftism and stuff is message. one of the leftist Usually primary methods choose. is the well, under have to choose way. between yeah. telling an entertainment the entertaining story or primarily focusing on delivering a message. Like obviously right, yeah. stories can be entertaining and deliver a message, but that's not gonna be the primary. Well, usually they focus. deliver a the much more apolitical message have such to be as like one or the other. love is powerful right. or, like or I mean, honor the point is, is the primary mess the primary focus is either gonna be entertaining art or political right. art. Well I mean like even art that has a message that straddles both tends to be about like some u- eternal truth not well, a like an archetypal message. thing. Right. right. Like you know the archetypal story again, of a man overcoming the his point fears. of making that is or, not about like, like you know parents loving their kids. that message per se. Right. It is it's just using make, those archetypes for an entertaining right. story. So I'm saying when they specifically focus on trying like the whole reason to make this movie is to get this idea across they're just normally not entertaining movies. Yeah not and as much. It's, and that's, that's my critique of movies. When I yeah. go to see a movie I'm going to be entertained. Right. Like, even if I appreciate that something was done well, if it's not entertaining, I'm not going to enjoy it and not going to spend money on it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, what I was going to say is I think the thing that kind of bugged me then, the little tempest in the teapot over that, because there was lash and backlash against it, like different groups of, of, um... Well, it's funny to see how people cared so much whether you thought, like, oh, this is going to be stupid, I'm not going to go see it. Right. Or it happens so much on the other side, you could be like, right. there's only one well, speaking role in this movie for a woman, I'm not going to see it or something. Right, yeah, and then that's And no one cares. Fine, no, yeah, yeah, like, but anyway, it was that, it was like, you know, one group said, I can't remember who it was, that's why I'm like stumbling it was here. It was Clary, I think, wrote the, that original article that, um, on Return of Kings about like, is this going to be, is it going to be Mad Max? He hadn't even seen the movie, he was just like, hey, there's some science here that may look like they're going to try to be preachy. Was it him? I didn't and know. It did. I and couldn't it went, like, it got like, way, like CNN, like all these oh, people okay. started reporting. Like, and then they started was, laughing. Well, there was, was like, like well, everyone's worried that it's going to be feminine. It's going to be feminine. And he was like, you know what? It looks like they're going to be preachy. Don't give me your money kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. okay. Even, that well, so like, I understand the instinct and I would agree with that normally, but I think, you know, Kind of a bummer that it's Clary because I, I'm not trying to dash on him at all, but like uh, well, his only mistake. I mean, he did well, the without seeing the movie exactly. Well, he said that, and that he wasn't yeah. dishonest okay. about no, it. No, that wasn't dishonest. But still, I think that's something that his fear is justified. But right. the method of doing it not before seeing the movie, we shouldn't do on the the side of like it depends the right. because I mean, you could, it's not like you don't want to say tell someone they're not allowed to talk about it just because you haven't seen it. You no, have no way. No, said but what that, I'm saying is like I don't know. I'm just worried. It's just the bottom line is it turns out he probably wasn't right. It's a big deal. Yeah. You know well, I mean? exactly. In the end, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't right about that movie. It doesn't mean he's not right about the, the problem yeah, but he that was he's just seeing. He's making a comedy. He said, hey, I, based on this, I've, I've seen, I've identified this, this, and this. It looks like that means that this is going to be true. If that's the case, don't give me your money. Or let me know, and uh, you know what I mean? He's actually yeah. So, I mean, like, worst case scenario, he was wrong about it. So, yeah, uh, well, the worst case scenario, I'm not even talking about him. I'm just saying, yeah. like, I think that art is difficult. To judge, because there can be a thousand little things in it like that. Yeah, but like he was, and, saying, and I think he was just saying like what I was saying. It's like you're not going there to see art when you go to see a Mad Max. Movie. Right, you're going but there you, to be entertained. Right, but even entertainment is art. That's that's the difference right. with but like the hoity-toity people it's out there art who, that entertains or it doesn't entertain. Right. So if you you just you're just going to get the entertainment. Right. Even though yeah. it is art, you know. Right. It no, but I'm saying matter if it's not. You're still getting aside from where I'm trying to go. Like what I'm saying is like you know art, whether it be at movies or comic books, which is not like the high quality art. It's just art to entertain. Not I me. Mean, not high quality is the wrong word. But it's not the hoity toity right. high art. It can be very good quality, but it's art to entertain. Video games, same thing. It's right. art to entertain, and um, some people will debate that whether video games are art or and everything. But of course, to me, it's all art in some sense. You know, like art. The difficulty of judging art is, you know, is there. And the problem, I guess, that I see is, is not that he was wrong or right. Because like I said, at worst case, he was wrong about one movie. Right. Who fucking cares? The problem is, is that I don't want it to swing so much the other way at all times. I mean, it is well, yeah, You don't want to get, you know, to be all outraged about every little stupid thing. Right. Like that. Because that wasn't the tone. Because that's, no, either. that wasn't. But that's just something... That it was just like looks like. I mean, obviously, it we're brought right up now. a talking point. That's why I don't. I was hesitant because I'm not even using this to comment on that article. Right. I'm just saying it brings up a good point to me. As people go forward, one of the things that was so bad about all this leftist stuff is that they can't judge anything for its entertainment value right. or as art. It has to be whether or not it's supporting a certain specific cause that they already right. love or not. And that's not what he was saying. Though. He wasn't no, saying don't see no. it because it, it has bad thing in it. He was saying right. like, looks like this is a, 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 Another, would have been an entertainment movie poisoned by trying to preach to you, right. and it's going to be a slog. So that's what like, I'm saying. Like, is like walk that line is yeah. what I'm saying. We right. got people got to be careful to walk that line. Like you can point out when things are doing that because right. plenty of them do. And that's all. He and people need to know. The only difference is that he 
did it. He said he was warning that it might be the case. And but it appears the second aspect wrong. I want to talk about is the more important one, which is the funny tempest in a teapot that came out of it. Like I said, it exploded out to CNN and everything. Right, but that just shows that they're doing. If they, if they think that's wrong, right, about what he wrote, what the hell do they what think they, they're, they're doing? doing right, yeah. reacting to that. Like he can't react Same to a movie and say, eh, it looks Hugo's like it's going to be lame. Stuff, don't go see it. Not and they're reacting to that article. I'd be like, oh my god, it's a hate. Same thing with all that like Hugo it's stuff, which I know you've seen some of, like the right. whole like. Um, Sad puppies and rabid puppies, yeah. which for those of you who don't know, I'm not super informed on this, so this is very basic overview. But it was like in uh, the Hugos, which are an award that a certain group gives out for science fiction, science fiction and, fantasy and fantasy writing. Yeah, and it turned out that over like the last several decades, it had been very insular. A lot of the same people and the same publishers were getting awards over and over. Yeah, and, and they because were, they, they were winning to, with like seventy bo- votes, and right? Stuff. It turns out they the were just doing a lot of insider votes. voting kind of stuff, and pretty much blocking and they, out anyone who had and any sort of conservative ideology, out, right? Exactly, and it was also very heavy ideological based. They were all like no longer voting for the people who started the genre, like Orson Scott Card and Heinlein and stuff. Thinkers. Yeah, because oh no, he didn't support gay marriage. Gay marriage, and Heinlein was an old white man who liked you know like uh, kind of weird libertarian values and stuff, and right. it was like. Um, but with a weird mix of, like, serve your country in the military thrown into his ideology. And, like, a libertarian with strong military industrial worship. Like, oh, we can't have him. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, they pushed everybody out. So then finally some other authors came about, created two kind of joke names called the Sad Puppies and the Rabbit Puppies, in which they, they actually looked at the rules and said, anybody can submit and anybody can sign up and vote. All you got to do is join the convention. Yeah, they got to pay, pay fee, their $40. And then you get a vote. So they said, hey, everybody. Help us out, pay forty bucks, join the convention, and vote for us. And it well, turned out that for people. us, it was just say because there's different well, categories. Yeah, well, like so vote for us, didn't... not meaning like me specifically, but they put a slate of all their fellow authors that they thought deserved to get right. votes, and they put ones that they thought deserved to get votes based on their their writing. Right. Some of them included ones that they don't necessarily agree with. And ideologically, like some right. of them were ideologically similar because they were the ones that had been some excluded of them, so far. But right. some of them, some were, of them were yeah. the people that um, yeah, they were thought on they the had other side of the fence, so to but speak. But then, yeah, right. then the people thought it was some sort of huge yeah. But then right. the same kind of thing where what the, the whole funny thing about this story, a long setup, just to tell this the simple anecdotal thing of then this group got really mad, saying that everything they're doing is wrong. But all they did was follow their rules, right? And they just happen to be from the wrong camp. Yeah. The oh, wrong, you're the wrong, wrong people, people doing the it. The wrong people were using our rules. Yeah, that's like the certain group, people can the group say in, certain words. The group that people. Saint Hood's tolerance and diversity is mad that new people showed up. Right. Because they're the wrong people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a whole long uh, dour side. We must get back to comedy. Yeah. Now. Humorous. Next up, what's our topic? I ran out. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, just got a few more. Actually, hit so. me. They're just kind of dumb, silly hit ones. Hit but me with he, the laser beam. apparently, in uh, here in Florida, I think South Florida man did something again. No, Florida girl, Florida like seventeen-year-old girl, like actually. But apparently, like high on like Flocka or whatever, one of those Wait, new kind of drugs. You probably did because I think it was one that one of our relatives I definitely did. But I don't remember what she did. She like jumped through a house, a window into a house, slapped somebody, <laughs> and then ran back outside. Or like they called the cops, and she was running around outside screaming like, "I am God! I, I am Satan!" Yeah. And like running around like covered like stabbed full of glass yeah, and like, like scratched up and bloody. Like she just ran in there and slapped somebody. Right? Yeah. And, like well, I mean, she probably like ran in and was just like, oh, oh, and they were like, "What? What? what hey, hey!" Just... And then like she slapped somebody and then ran out. You know, like the, man, all these new right. drugs are just like well, they're ridiculous. all like this ruin you, like that right, yeah. crocodile, which causes all like, like huge like, necrotizing it, right, sores, and dead it's, flesh. It's not like it's meth like wasn't already bad enough. Coke or something, right? Like, yeah, Jesus like Christ. everything from like meth onward has just gotten worse and worse. These, it's like honest. all these like crystallized. But honestly, or a lot of this is a result of the drug war. Yeah, because they got to make these new fakes. Weird, like well, I can't get heroin or cocaine, so I'm gonna like. Shit in a bottle and breathe the fumes, or right? Like, yeah, you know, huff paint or whatever. Like, right? You could buy. You think anyone would be huffing paint if you could buy weed where you could buy cigarettes? You right. Know what yeah. I mean, like, no. People I mean, would just be couple, mellowing out. A couple of you know mouth right. breathers, maybe, but those are and, people that are destined. And the to thing about that that fuck their lives always up is um, that people don't acknowledge is like people will on one side will say you know like they want to get rid of a lot of the rules, saying just let people do what they want. Right. And then the other side will say. But it causes damage. And they don't acknowledge them that, yeah, we know. Right. It will cause damage. That's the problem is it point. is causing damage, but it's also causing legal damage. There will always be people who use right. it so much that they become bums. 
Yeah. But they're already doing that. And those people aren't... And it's not going to increase... Bums. Right, yeah. These people are not going to increase more simply because drugs become legal. It just means right. that we will not be as resting as much bums. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there's, it's true that there's and they're probably, a small percentage of people that... I mean, like, say weed, for example, that right now are fine for some reason because it's not a, a, it's not legal. They they'll just try have drugs. Right, and then but then if it was, then addicted. they would. But that's such yeah. a small... And it doesn't address the fact that you should be punishing people for something they haven't done yet. Right, and for exactly. And aren't yeah. inherently destructive, necessarily. Right, like, if you are hurting yourself... By that metric, we should be... And unfortunately, though, well, there's this a lot is of what they're doing. By that metric, yeah. Alcohol and just but what's so funny is that they, they'll want to... The, exactly. They'll yeah. want to start controlling your food soon. Right, yeah. But for that destructive body of yourself, but... You have to if you say take that road. are free to do things that are destructive or increase their risk, or they're not. And if they're not, then there's no there's any there's no limit to what you can start. It's yeah. just arbitrary. So why right. not control what type of car we drive? Right. Yeah. What type of clothing we're whether we not we're, if white people can go out in the sun or black right, people yeah. can eat fried foods because they have a higher levels of cholesterol and stuff like that. Right. You know yeah. I mean? Exactly. Like, yeah. Why not just take anything that's ri- and I was reading an article the other day about anything like, that's a risk inducer. They let their say. kid do something. Like go to the corner corner store. Yeah, like walk down the street. And they were 11. Somebody got eleven year old kids. So not like a five year old. I was running around at that age and got like a Lego set with money he had saved up from mowing lawn. And they arrested the parents for like child endangerment. Yeah, and I'm like, so Absurd. what they're basically saying is that you increased, uh, you put your kid in a, or let your kid in a situation where you, his risk was increased. So right. like, is any increase and of not risk even criminal? Really that much? Why driving him down the road increases the risk way more than letting him walk to the corner store? Exactly. Why is that illegal? Driving a Driving him in, in, a, in the front seat of a Corvette instead of in a Volvo sedan is going is increases his risk. Why is that not negligent? But even a Volvo sedan on the highway is increasing his risk more than going da- or down flying, the street to the corner or, yeah, store. Or yeah. Just dry, yeah, and still. Or honestly, I guarantee you that taking him to public school increases his risk more than walking to the corner store. Yeah, but the because like the like chance being molested in risks, school is higher than being kidnapped on the of those street. Risks relate to that particular risk. It's. Where if it, where do you draw the line of where it's right to take people? You rights. haven't actually done anything. There's no injury caused here. No. But just the act of doing something that increases risk but can't that's be the illegal. Funny thing. Or not even think about it that way. No. They're thinking about it as you do something that I don't like or yeah, I think it's I think bad to do with your kids. Yeah. Something could have happened. Right. So fucking. Well, that's what? why I don't think that DUI should be a crime. No, unless I mean, damages are caused. Well, then yeah. that is a crime. You don't need yeah. the act. They just keep backing the stick up to try and get it before it happens. Same with this. Right. Yeah. So instead of trying to punish people and do something wrong, they do make all these laws to prevent it from happening, which right. obviously it's a, it's bypasses a, the innocent until proven guilty. Principle. Right. Well, it's it's a principle of fear instead of one of freedom. Right. But then they, at the same time, hypocritically, they let you fuck up your life directly in a lot of other ways if you want to. Right. Yeah. You can go get, you know... Um, your arm sawed off if you can find a surgeon to do it. There's people who want to be like amputees. They have right, a yeah, fetish or, people, or something. Yeah, plastic surgery to be a celebrity or something. Yeah, and they turn this yeah. bizarre, like, wax figure version of a celebrity. Right. So I can go or I can go fucking hang gliding, which is, like, super dangerous. Right, And yeah. that's legal, but I can't, like, decide to spend my money on a hand of blackjack. Or I can I ruin want. the rest of my life with student loans and other yeah, things. Or you know, I can like, chug alcohol until I, my, I get bitch tits and my liver explodes. <laughs> right, yeah. Can, they can't smoke, like, a joint or something. Right, yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? like, somebody can't decide to smoke a joint. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It doesn't make it, so, obviously, there's the hypocritical aspect, but there's also the aspect of just, like, there's no logic to the decision that they're making. Yeah, it's all kinds of... Because even silly. if you agree that this, this should be done in a moral sense... They're right. doing a piss poor job of it. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, exactly. then alcohol and cigarettes shouldn't be legal either. Caffeine shouldn't be legal. Like, well, what? that's the thing. Like, a lot of it, there is a, unfortunately strong. And that's why they're getting you know, worse. I guess puritanical is the best word, but I don't even think of it as puritanical because it's not even really Christian anymore. It's just this moralizing. Yeah, it's just puritanical. Put, right. Yeah, exactly. It's just this moralizing. Um, overbearing of like you need to stop doing all this and it's our job to make sure you well don't. that's why um my dad always had the quote where he said it turns like it turns out that the the liberals and the status basically were are a lot more um controlling and bossy than the church people ever were right because yeah. originally the liberals in the classical sense like 60 cents of like just to allow right. wanted just to do it like nothing should be yeah, illegal, early basically. 1700s it meant the right. liberal meant to be to allow to say to allow to so b- remove liberals laws were like always saying that the conservatives didn't want you to have any fun but they did, the interesting thing was most of the time like obviously there's some totalitarians amongst them too but most of the time they relied on just shaming and social pressure Morris, to say yeah. like this is wrong you shouldn't do this and they right. weren't as dedicated to try and making it all illegal right they didn't but, want jack boots coming to your right. door they the just wanted to say you're not to going to heaven stuff illegal right yeah like, should, it's illegal to say like words that are hateful right to yeah. do certain things you have actual yeah. jail time consequences and now, but now some of them are getting mad when they're like oh what you can't 
grow something in your front yard now, or what's wrong with the plan? It's like, well, this is what you you this asked the for. The world this. you, you empowered the yeah. you gave the government these powers, and you thought they were just going to stop when they got to your hobby. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right, that yours were safe. That your particular sacred cows were going to be safe from the slaughter. Right, when exactly. When you all marched us all into the slaughterhouse. Exactly. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. So may their chains rest lightly upon them. That's mm-hmm. what I have to say. <laughs> posterity, posterity forget they were ever our countrymen. Right. All right. Well, that's so, probably right. a good place to end this one. Exactly. With Sam Adams. i got to remember that now. I've yeah, Sam Adams. Times. Thomas Jefferson's got plenty of good ones, too. He's got too. some awesome quotes. But right. I just thought yeah. that particular one was... No, that was I, his, my, best, my favorite quote of his is, I swear eternal hostility against all forms of tyranny over the mind of man. Yeah, that's Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, I know that, that one. Yeah. That's what I said. That's, I knew that one was. Well, I was clarifying for the audience. Right. For you. Yeah, like... Because I always that use that one when people say, like, well, you just don't have to be, like, confrontational about it or something. Right. Like, no, like, no. I swear eternal hostility. Right. Not tolerance. Right. Not ignoring. Hostility. Right. Against all forms of tyranny. Yeah, that's one. I guess we won't end it right there. Yeah. Get this big, that's one, something that's bugged me my whole life. Fucking okay, moderates. That's a good, another that, good quote, too. I wish you were hot. That's from the Bible, too. Yeah. I'd rather you be hot or warm if you're lukewarm and I spit you, you from my mouth. mouth. Yeah, exactly. like, it's actually worse. Like, have some fucking balls. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> at least be wrong. Instead right, of yeah. saying, oh, I don't I can fight what is wrong. Right. I can't take these well, I can dead have respect weights. for someone who's dedicated. Yeah. You know what I mean, too. Right. Well, I mean, it's not even just that. It's like, it's, um, for me, what I was actually getting at. I mean, that's definitely a thing. But uh, what I was getting at is like, yeah. It's like you said, the non confrontational stuff or whatever right. else. I was always the kind of kid and now the kind of man who was like, I would say, that's wrong. Like, right. that's wrong. And like, people would say something like, well, just yeah, don't waste your life worrying like about that. And I'm like, kind of what do you mean, don't waste my life worrying about that? That's wrong. And right. it was just like, would not, I could not conceive how people would be like, well, what are we going to do about it? It's like, right. well, I'm not saying that there's anything I can do about it, but to sit here and be like, that's life and just deal with it without going, yeah, but it is wrong. Like, right. it is more honest to me for someone to say, yes, it is very wrong, but and there's today there can, is nothing yeah. I can do about it. Or I'm not willing to give my life for that particular cause. Or right, whatever, yeah, yeah. Which or, is fine. Well, I mean, like, you know, I have respect for that because at least they're not, they're not using, they're not hiding from it. They're well, saying, not every cause I can't is win one that, that you should take to, you know, it's not take a, to a to fight. die on right. every time. Exactly. But every, call, every truth must be acknowledged. Like, even well, if you can't fight for every truth, you must acknowledge well, even it. Even if it's not, you could, but you're just not going to. Like, right, right. I, um, like there's but, some like things I said, that I disagree with that the government does that the only way to literally get any further in battling it would be to take up arms against them. It's like for that particular issue, it's literally just not a cause worth dying for. Right, there right. are some, but not even on that to... big of an aspect of stuff like you know the government and things like that. I'm just saying like general things where I would be like you know I never understood people's. I mean I understand it now growing up you know but like. Because they just understand people are hiding from stuff or just don't deal with it. Or most people just got to get on with their lives. And, like, I get that. But what I don't get or what I find distasteful, I should say. I get yeah. it, but I find distasteful and always found distasteful is when people, like, just want to not think about it or wash it right, over. Right, right. Because, like, well, it would happen. Saying, it would like, happen with I recognize my, that I'm being screwed here and i just not willing to do what it takes to, to, to stop it or I have so no means just, right. I, have, so I know just, no way to stop so they just rationalize that it's not really that they're not really, really getting screwed, screwed over or that this that actually is that the they're best okay way with this right yeah because yeah. there would be times with my family or something else where I'd talk about like the law or something and I'd be like or something that happened I'd be like that's wrong or that's how it's not how it should be and they're like but it's the way it is and it's like yeah. That's not an adequate answer. Well, like, it's just not an answer. It's a right. fact. But right, yeah. Like, I, I understand that's the way it is. That's what I'm saying. I'm I mean, saying I it is the, as the, such. The, the, there's a point where you don't even want to spend a lot of mental energy on something that you either have decided you aren't or can't going to change. Right. And just, like, bitching about it is not helpful. Right. But, but that's not even how they present it. No, that's not what they, they're That's not how they present their disagreement. Their disagreement right. was like, why? Like you said, why are you being so confrontational? Like, right. <laughs> well, because I'm acknowledging the truth, right. you know? Like, I'm just all right, I'm like doing... just because you're tied up while you're, like, you're, um, Family's getting beaten or something that you should just be quiet instead of shouting at them or something. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like no, no. Like, you motherfucker! Like you yelling at the help. Like, I'm not saying it's going to do anything. I'm not saying it's going to do anything. I'm just acknowledging the truth that this is not ideal. This is right. not right. This is not how it should be. You right. Know? And I, I, but I do. I will say there's a point. In some you have to be careful to right. get to a point where you're just like wasting a lot of mental energy and life hours on something that you're not even right. planning on. And I accept that changing. wisdom from my elders because sometimes right. that's what they were saying. Right. Is that like you can't waste your life tr- raving against the wind because right. you can't decide what you're going to do and do it or change course and, right. and move on. But sometimes people will, a lot of people will say that they'll just be like, oh, that's how it is or what are you going to, yeah, what, yeah, but what can you do about well, instead it? Instead of like what I just said, instead of re- what they, 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 their choices are either fight it or just like support it. it. 
right. or like support it. Right. Yeah. You know exactly. I mean? It's like yeah. Exactly. They make it the dichotomy of you must either you know accept it and support it instead of the lead or, follow or get out of the way. They're like you have to lead or follow this cause, like champion or right. get in line. You know. What I mean? Right. Yeah. Like champion your own. It's cause like sometimes you can't fight the way the government is running. Right. Like for the most part, the average person cannot change all that's wrong with our modern society right. in terms of like legal stuff and societal problems and stuff like that. But you can, you do have the right to get out of the way. Right. You do have the right to say it's wrong and be, have other people who acknowledge it instead of just saying, but no, it's not. It's right. the way it's it is. It's the same way I pay my taxes, even though I think it's, they're wrong and immoral and stuff. Right, yeah, even stuff. though I think they're being it's spent on things I don't... Going like, this whole system, but at this right. point I'm not willing to die for it, for that right, particular yeah. belief, so I pay right. it when I when But I that, that's what I mean. Like ex- Taxes is a very good example. Yeah. Because this is an example, like, let's but say... But then people, they act like it's okay because we... Like, well, or the people or will say, to, like, you yeah. have to pay your taxes like it's a sacred thing. Right. And then, because it sounds like part of the social contract and everything, right. and then when you say, Anytime "No, I'm paying my taxes because I don't want to go to jail," they're right. like, "Well, what, what's wrong with you? You don't want? You're not a patriot. You don't want to pay your taxes." Or they act like, like you have to. It's like, yeah, that no, doesn't make sense. I don't. They're we're, not we're, spending it in a way that's helpful right. to me. They're not spending it in a way that's helpful to our country. Well, I just, I always they're not hiring that people I, I find follow. reasonable or respectful. The only laws yeah. I follow now is because it was something that I would have either done whether there was no law, right. or I follow for the same reason that I would give. A gang of twenty guys with guns, my wallet. I don't can't think they, I don't think they need the money or should have the money. Right. I just I'm not going to die over that particular amount of money. So right. Yeah. Some, some things I would. That's right. Acknowledging guys. something like that right. freaks some people out, and they want to know. Especially because like, they see you giving them the money, and right. they're like, "What do you mean is wrong? Why are you giving them money then? Just don't give it to them." And you're like, "What the fuck is, there, is wrong with you?" Right. You well, not even mean? that. Like most people get that you can't not give the government money, but they can't acknowledge to themselves. That you could be in a position in which giving it is wrong, but you still have to do it because they outnumber you and right. they outgun you. That's what I mean. And then they they will be like, they think like the government's going to shit, well, America's say, going like, to well, shit. Don't do it then, like, right? Yeah, and you're like, okay, whatever, dude. Right, and but they're saying that as like a dismissal. They're saying <laughs> right. that as like, well, then well, because you're them, so like, bad that, at it. they don't understand the realities of it. They they right. don't other understand actually being like ideologically pure and still being like forced to do certain things. Right, still being forced at the point of the gun. Right. To, to comply. And there's some things that are worth. If you Some did, hills were dying on. Even at the force of a gun, you wouldn't do it, and to remain ideologically sound and not, you know. But other things are not that particular type of like moral. Right. Many are not. Yeah. Uh, but there are those lines. Right. And what's frustrating is there are people who won't acknowledge that those lines exist. To them, it's just right. It's just unevaluated in their mind, and they just say, "You well, you pay your taxes because what you have to do." And, and then, then if like, you don't why? want to be a part of the system in every freaking aspect, you just should just leave or something. Right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, they, like they, why don't you just leave? You must accept system? all of it or none of it. Right. It's like, no, I, I can accept reform. All of it. It's just like you have to support all of it and be okay with all That's of it. That's what I mean by accept. Yeah. Like, you must take it as it is and want it to be that way. Right. Or you and must... never bitch about anything. And never, right, or you must get, get the hell out of here. Which you know? exactly and like, at this point, that's not even a valid argument because you have to pay right. to leave. Right, you got to pay to leave the country. You can't just renounce your citizenship. For citizenship that you get through no choice of your own, this right. being born in a you didn't ask you, nobody asked to be born zone. you have to pay over 2200 bucks to renounce it and that's if they even granted to you granted to you and there's certain things that you're not allowed to leave the country with yeah. like without paying like tariffs or whatever so if you had all your belongings here and you're just like and they're like, you know what? If you don't like this country, just leave. Okay, bye. Oh no, you can't take these things with you. Right, even they're your you're property, going and all of a sudden you not can't, take them. can't even leave the country with them. I get saying you can't come in with them. Right, but you can't leave with them, and you can't leave, like to renounce your citizenship that we just automatically prefer. Apparently, without renou- paying. Us. Right, yeah, exactly. You have to pay us, and these things that are your property are not and your while property you're here. Anymore. You must. You are pay. automatically beholden to an arbitrary set of rules that other people that have lived here have come up with. Right. And decided that just by being... you got to pay to leave, but we'll let other people in for free. Right. They'll start yeah. getting rights. You don't have any rights when you want to leave. Yeah. Because you got to pay to keep your own shit. So that's what I say. <laughs> I just always... Like, people... That's, I guess that's what's the, frustrating. The government has the same authority... People don't make... realize how bad it is. Right. They don't realize how ideologically impure this the country has gone from the idea of freedom. And, and just they how think, arbitrary yeah, it is. And how too. arbitrary it is. How Byzantine in its laws. How... Well, that's one thing that a lot of people... You know, it took me a, a few years to... Um, to recognize too and this is like getting a little bit off topic what we're saying but it's okay because we're just yeah. moving on yeah. but the idea that like the constitutional government is not a, it's not freedom because yeah. anytime you have a the constitution is set up so that it is probably the very best way you could construct a non-voluntary government to, in, to protect people's freedoms the problem is at its core it is still a non-voluntary system right. and anytime you have a non-voluntary system you're not free. all governments are in some way but they don't have to be not necessarily you know I mean? yeah but the, 
the instance of not of voluntary governments is very low throughout history. Is basically what I'm saying. Oh, of course it is way low. It's yeah. almost non-existent. But right. the point is, it's irrelevant when you're talking about what's right and what's wrong and what's right. You know, well, I mean, there's, there's what's right and what's wrong and what's possible with human beings, and you know, well, it's certainly possible to say you can. You can sign a contract to be part of our group. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. But I mean, well, I'm saying like voluntary. I don't. I'm not saying because people misunderstand me when they say I think government should be voluntary. It means that you can like dip in and out whenever you want. No, and I'm like, yeah. no, that doesn't no, have to yeah. be that. No, obviously not case. that. But like I said, just by being born here, you're automatically signed up for a bunch of things that you can't even escape from if you want right. to under the threat well, of like, violence. So what I'm talking about is like I think that you, could you would have to have possible. A, you would change. have to have some concessions to the realities like that like born here but you could until build, you're an adult right or you could have something that builds in the fact that we're not going to hold you here against your will if you decide you want to leave right of you course. would have a system every at some like point you will have adult, some involuntary you get to, you get to decide whether you want to be a citizen of the country or not you right get, you, then you sign a contract and it can be for like terms like every three years or whatever you say and during that time you're bound by the laws even if you quote unquote change your mind because right. you've already you, you can't withdraw consent you know what i mean right or a contract that you've already created but it's certainly possible you don't have to be like well just by being here you automatically have to be take part in this entire right. system and there's a there are a lot of uh, certainly governments or feasible. societal structures throughout history that employed some aspect of that in the sense that very few of them were contract based but they were right. like once you were initiated then you got powers and responsibilities i.e. you become you could a leave. citizen like, I mean, they or the council the of elders if nothing else it just yeah and for the most part they didn't care if you just right. wanted to fucking get out of town, like whatever. Right? Yeah. You Why decide would they care? if you say I am no longer part of this people. Throw down your standard yeah, or something like your sword die. and like yeah. walk out. You're, they're just like bye. Right. But I mean, not only is there not. I mean, they wouldn't like, let you live in their midst. Still, like, be like, well, my castle is going to be an independent castle. They're like, no, you got to go to the right. border. But you could do that. You would just take right. your possessions and, and walk the right. fuck out of there. I mean, of course, that's except in cases where, like, your possessions were what you were using for the king. Like, I'm the count of castle, whatever. Right. I'm taking all this gold that's in this castle. Like, no, right. no, that's the king's. Right. But your personal possessions, the guy walked out with his chests of clothes and let, and his letters and his, his own personal horses and household and walked to the border They're and said, fuck you care. guys. They probably would have cared. Yeah, I don't know enough about history to say it. Well, I'm saying there would be a, an abundance of societies that would not that, care. That would have allowed that, yeah. Right. All the way up until government started getting ever more oppressive in the late latter modern eras you know yeah so that's i mean so that's that aspect of like a a um voluntary government certainly possible right that's not there's nothing that would prohibit that at all right but like aside like, honest, from that aspect yeah. but just going back to what we're saying there like not just the, the theory of voluntary and voluntary government stuff but just yeah like the people won't acknowledge like that you can be for principles and you can be patriotic and still See that the emperor has no clothes. You know right. what I mean? Like a lot of people, yeah, and a, a lot slave of people thought even, slavery was wrong. Doesn't mean he has to charge the slave owner and get gunned down or something. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or yeah. it's like, well, shut up and work. If you if you don't want to be a slave, then just leave. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was never telling anyone how shitty this is ever again. Right. Yeah. But then, like I said, there is a point where you're just like going to be bitching for no reason and not. Right. Yeah. And I know that was some of yeah, as a young kid, my elders just like you know, just like calm down. What are you going to do? About right. It? Exactly. You know, like, no point. But that was in, a, in an effort to protect you to, and also to realize, like, yeah. not to basically stop fighting, but to realize what you should be doing in your right. quest. For Some it. of it, the, the frustrating part, though, was just when people w- wouldn't, a lot of times it wasn't it that, though. It wouldn't acknowledge yeah. that something was wrong. Yeah. Or they wouldn't acknowledge that. Or even understand. That you should, that it's okay to be upset at those things being wrong. Right. Like, there's a, yeah, that was the that's the thing. They try to say don't be upset instead of this being like, it, it, though there are some facts in life that you realize that no matter how shitty they are, you're not going to have the ability or power to, to change, change it. it. Right. And exactly. you have to just accept that. And, uh, right, and that accepting that doesn't mean accepting that this is right. It just no, means accepting, accepting that, that you're, you're not powerless to, to affect this right. wrong thing. Just like except if you were like a midget, you're going to have to at some point accept that you're always going to be four feet tall. Right, you know yeah. what I mean? It doesn't mean that it's right. It's not accepting okay. that that's the ideal state. You you're not going that around. Should be the way that and you that's like also it, this you loops know all I mean? the way back around to a lot yeah. of stuff we've or talked about. But that mindset is kind of what's wrong with a lot of stuff in the world because now it's all about like you know body positivity and all that stuff. It's all about making what is not ideal accepted making it the ideal instead well, of being okay with acknowledging day, right? that the human the beings I, are not always ideal by trying to like just to use it as an example there's lots of examples of this type of thought but of course like the, the everything is beautiful body positivity part yeah the reason they kind of um expose the fact that they really don't believe what they're saying they, so they because really that's believe that like being pretty is important 
Instead yeah. of saying like, look, some, there's always going to be spectrum on anything. Intelligent, height, strength, yeah, they're, not saying it's o- not, they're not saying it's okay to not be pretty. They're, they're saying, saying I am pretty, pretty too. They're saying everything's I'm pretty, pretty too. Right. You're Instead pretty saying, too. Like, you know what? Like I remember, um, I think it was Keanu Reeves had a quote one time. And he was like, there's smart people and there's dumb people. I'm not smart. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's like you don't have to feel like you're a piece of shit just right. when you recognize. He's made millions of dollars, and he's very popular. I mean, the point is, you don't he's have to feel. He's done okay like for himself. You're a piece of shit to recognize certain aspects that are just true yeah. of yourself. So you can recognize that you're not. And character is a, not necessarily related to character drive and capacity. Right. Not and, or inherently your to or enjoy only. Life. Yeah, like, not would it only nice related to, to be above things. average in every particular. Of course, it would be. And it always proves your chances, but it's not. It's not the final rip on your life. If you're not physically attractive person, like. You're looking at you physically does not cause an automatic lust attraction, a physiological attraction in people. Most people are going to be in that category. Some are going to be worse than others. And the the majority of you human are, are doesn't mean that you – it's much, much more healthy and useful to just accept that and then structure your life so Better that you yourself in the way you can or accept you can the things that you than can. Than to try and say, no, fuck that. Beautiful, like I'm, I am beautiful, but that's I'm just still, as beautiful. But every as the time most you beautiful. say that, you're still admitting that being you're, you're admitting that you think being beautiful is important, right? But instead of trying to, so which is terrible if you're not beautiful, because these people go through life just being lied to, and they go through life judging themselves silently while right. trying to avoid that own judgment. That's right. what's really well, because it's a pathology. Knows. They're, they're saying, going on. Every, they're saying like, yeah, you're so beautiful. So they they think it's great and it's cool to be beautiful, but. They're being told that everything is beautiful. They just change the definition of the word instead of teaching. Well, they also them, like, you know what? more than just that. More than beautiful. just that, they are seeking everyone telling them beautiful because they know they are not in some level. Right, deep and down they, they know they're deep, not. And instead of just down, accepting that's and still realizing, so important you know to what? them, it doesn't matter if you're like not everyone has to be physically beautiful. Have you can right. still like it would be nice if you were be nice if I was born a millionaire. If I was born to be six foot three and built like the rock, you know that'd yeah, be sweet. Exactly. Not everyone is, and doesn't mean that I'm gonna like. Suffer through life because of it, right? Yeah, like not that. inherently every Some day. Some people are born, with, you know, without hands. What do you want? Right. Some you people do I mean? much better with much less. Yeah, yeah, it's a spectrum, too. So I mean, it's the idea that you have to be beautiful, and to make this happen, we'll just say everything's beautiful. Right, it doesn't yeah. make any sense, and it's it's a you can tell you can see these people's minds are battling with it. You know right. what I mean? Well, that's what I'm talking about. Like, because like secretly they know. Yeah, of course they know. Even unconsciously, yeah. I guess most of the time it's unconscious because the the rhetoric is so deep. But yeah. um, and the brainwashing so deep. Right. But like I said, it, it they know because that's what they're seeking. They're right. thirsty for being be- for the compliments of being beautiful because they believe that's the only thing that matters. Right. And then they look at themselves and say, "I can't get that so unless I change the world." They're not even campaigning for like you shouldn't care if someone's beautiful or not. Right. You know what I mean? They're campaigning for. Well, everyone they say that beautiful. sometimes, but, but then they, they still never campaign. really do though. Right. That's you're right. Thing. They because that would be acknowledging that they're not beautiful. They're not right. willing to do that. Right. So yeah, if exactly. you look carefully, they you dab almost, on it I would I would challenge someone to find me an example where they say not everyone's beautiful and that's okay. That's not. No, you're right. On they the never say it plain like that. They never spectrum. say it plain like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They always say everyone is beautiful in some way or something right, like yeah. that. They'll add some, a qualifier. Add a in qualifier their own that lets way, them say that like which is just not just, words have meanings. Not everyone is beautiful. Right. Period. Right. Yeah. End of not everybody's it. strong. Not, value not everybody's just, wise. Yeah. Not, not everybody's, everybody's fast. Not everybody's, not everybody's tall. tall. Yeah. Not, not everybody's, everybody's white. Stupid. Not everybody's black. Yeah, not everybody's you know lanky. Not everybody's fat. Not, not, not everybody's stupid. Not everyone dies of AIDS. Not everyone right. dies of cancer. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. It's just a fact. It's not a value statement. Not everyone was born in one town. Not everybody right. was you know born on the same day. You know. But they've decided already what they think is important. You can't have your vaunted diversity. They already decided which end of the bell curve they think is important. Based yeah. on the positive results that you normally get if you are on that end of the bell curve. Yeah. And then so instead of just admitting that that's the way the universe is set up right. and finding ways to well, what it is. maximize your individual potential. Yeah, it's, ra- it's really against reality. They try to change it by just like... This change word definitions. Because yeah, they into, can't do the work to change themselves. Right. Or they're unwilling. Or they're not willing to, to they accept can't, their position They in find the universe. it easier or more preferable to try to do the work to change the society. Right. Because they can't change themselves, unwilling or unable to change themselves, unwilling or unable to accept reality, so we shall change society. Right. Yeah. Just like if I wanted, there's no way I'm ever going to be a professional football player. Yeah, and I could I could try for a thousand life, years, like change the definition of what it means to be a professional football player, or I could say. But all I've done is made football a new game. If I lobby for ten years to change the uh, the rules of the yeah. sport so that I am its star player, right. all I've done is created a new game. And a fraud. Yeah, I'm not a football you player. A fraud that's not going to convince you in your heart. Right. Yeah. So, that, exactly. but instead, you can say, you know, what am I really seeking 
what emotions am I chasing when I want to play professional football? Right. And I can say, well, it's a, the thrill of competition. Right. So find a new kind of competition. People, find other kinds of competition or sporting events. Right. Be involved that, that's in, or create thing. your own league. Right. Like I said, it's really about that fraud aspect because you could right. go and invent a new sport in which you are the star player. And that would be honest and good. Is, but if you try to subvert they don't know football that they're, that they're going to be after. a new sport well, so that you were good at it, it's fraud. But they don't realize that they're chasing emotions. And Tony yeah. Robbins is good stuff on this. Yeah. Like talking about like everything is about the emotions well, you're trying to get from it. There's some other So like why when you say like, that, oh I love my job, it's like you don't really love your job per se. You love something that it's giving you, whether that's right. the respect, whether that's the physical work that you're doing at your job, whether that's right. the money and what that can get you. Like there's some emotion that it's giving you that it's probably not the only Understanding thing. Understanding your give own personal motivations is a huge so benefit. Right, because, it's because, and it's yeah. so unexamined to most people. And it what it allows you to, to get and things it's not fully you, examined that otherwise would think were impossible. Because when you right. say Oh, I'm not pretty, and I really want to be pretty. If you being pretty wouldn't really matter if you're the only person on earth. It's like and could yeah. never see your reflection or something. Right, so it's yeah. like, what are you really trying to get out of it? Do you want people to be attracted to you? Then there's other things you can do that right. go beyond physical. Do you want to just be uh, like a famous or something? Then that can be done without being physically attractive or something. Like right, you have yeah. to realize what it is that you're really seeking. Or you can seeking. at least work towards that, right? You know? And improve your. Uh, or like if you're like, I want to be president. Like obviously, most people just probably not going to be president just because the numbers. And most people don't really want to do work of politics. Right. They so just it's like, what are you be... really looking for? Are you looking for the fame, the respect? You know, the status of being in a position of power, like that can all be gotten other ways too. Right. And some of these things are not things that you should you should focus on why you really want that. You know? Right, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like that, if you just let go of it, you can Yeah, but that was, um, I can't remember the exact author, but it but, was some other book that I read that was very, so it wasn't the Tony Robbins, uh, anything from Tony Robbins, but a similar thing where he was talking about basically one of the most powerful things in life is to understand your motivations. Yeah. And once you start understanding human motivations and your motivations, you see through everything. It's, it's also, like having the mystic sight where like you just can break yeah. people oh, down. Yeah. Because like... But also makes your goals so much more attainable for that very it's, reason. It's so hard to see your own motivation. Because basically, you see though, that you want yeah. these things and you think that it has to be that thing without no. realizing what it is that you're really trying to get. Right. Just like a, also, a good example of this is an office space where he's like, man, I wish I had... He's like so focused on like wishing he had like a million dollars and a right. bunch of money and he's like, why do you want that? Like, what do you do? And he's like, man, I do nothing. I would just sit on my ass all day and do nothing. And his yeah, roommate... That's what I do his, already. No, his, no, his neighbor's like... You don't got a million dollars. You don't need a million dollars to do nothing, man. Right. Look at my cousin. He's broke. Don't do shit. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So his really goal was just to not be stuck in this like job paradigm. It's right. Like, you don't need a million dollars to get out of that. Right. Yeah. People focus on. You just whatever wanted to do. sit around, go fishing, and relax, nothing. enjoy his time. Like you can right. do that if you're willing to accept the realities of that situation. Right. Yeah. Live a, a, a simpler life. Right. And, and I always I tell life. people too that you we live in a world where you can have anything you want, and they get caught up by trying to have everything they want. You right, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Instead, when literally there's almost nothing you could come up with without being weirdly specific, like I want to be president, you know, instead right. of just I want to be in a position of power and fame or whatever. Right. Like if I wanted a Lamborghini, I could have, like, that was what my right. sole focus would be. You could instead, find 10,000 different ways to earn money, save or not, up, or get do a without even earning money, do something and become friends, you know, and it doesn't matter. The point is that, like, if, right. There'd they, be people focus on numerous like, ways. Well, I, if I did this and I couldn't do, like, I, well, I need everything to be honest. Like, no, yeah. that's not even. Choice. Choice paralysis is its own thing, but uh, right. but yeah, like um, basically about, back to the motivations thing. Like you know, the, man, I can't remember which author this was, but yeah, it was um, it was interesting stuff because they were talking about it more from like a, a, a spiritual and like self improvement type avenue. Yeah, but they were talking about like sometimes what was good about it that they were talking about is they were talking about integrity and how. And understanding your motivations, meaning right. that a lot of times the bad choices you make aren't bad choices because like, oh, look, you're choosing to do the wrong thing. You're often like, oh, I want to go murder people. Right, yeah. You know, it's usually never so obvious. Or I shouldn't have stomped that baby or whatever. You're like, oh, yeah. I just want to stomp. I shouldn't have stomped that baby. get you the emotions that it's you that wanted. You are not being honest with yourself about why you're seeking this thing. Like, okay, I'm going after this choice. Well, that's my point. They don't realize why they're going after it. Right. I'm thing. going after this choice because of fear or envy or doubt Right. Or something like that, and so inevitably it leads to an outcome born of fear, envy, and doubt. And so well, that goes it comes back to, to what I was saying end. before about chasing negative emotions instead of working towards positive ones. Right. They, they work, you make your decisions based on what you're trying to avoid because you don't really know what it is that you really want. Right. So instead, you just like, well, I'm just afraid of this happening, so I'm going to just make my just, right. know, find out where I'm driving by author, avoiding the area of town that I don't want to go to. I uh, was talking about, like I said, it was more like a. a spiritual counselor type thing so this I mean but this paradigm still works even if you're not like a religious person because like the, it's about human choice making yeah and emotions but like what they were talking about is like you know let's say you um, 
like a lot of people get caught up with the idea of sin as like this big list of do and don'ts. Right. And like what is right and wrong is this big list of do and don'ts. And it's not always the case because sometimes what it is is the it's really the motivation. In your heart, you are seeking this because you want this other person to hurt. Right. What's well, the like difference that. between like murder or, and killing? If you, right. Yeah. Like the, everyone makes a big deal because the translation of thou shalt not kill. But right. it doesn't mean that like it's a, you, you should know, never kill when a guy saying, is coming oh, like, down to kill you. That happens by your hand. Like you do something, don't even know that it's killed someone. That you've right. done the same thing as someone who goes out and tortures someone to death for pleasure or something. Right. Like, give exactly. me a break. Yeah. Those motivations are right. different. Exactly. But like examining your own motivations is the the good lesson there because what it is is that, like I said, it will almost always come to a bad end if your motivations are, like you said, avoiding bad negative things yeah. instead of seeking positive and. If you're acting out of the worst parts of yourself instead of the best parts of yourself. Yeah, and you're not really or, working towards the thing that you think you are. Right, exactly. You don't realize that, that you're subverting your own self right. sometimes because yeah. you're acting on a negative um, impulse, a, um ignoble impulse instead of a ennobling impulse, yeah. meaning one that tends you towards your better self. Your best self versus one that tends you towards yeah, but your people worst. don't realize that, and they just go off of what's you know preconceived as being successful or what I should want, and, right? Yeah, and then exactly. they end up in these positions where they're just miserable, right? Because they're not really doing the things that actually that they're passionate about, right? And also, what was very cool about this book, like I said, that's very applicable. You don't remember what it was? Ability. No, I think I do. I don't remember the book, but it was um, one of the ones from um, I think it was John Eldridge was the author. Okay, I don't know if I've heard of him. He mostly, like I said, he mostly writes like Bible religious books. Right. So a lot of people probably have it. But this was the aspect of his books that were most fascinating to me, um, and how I was introduced to them by somebody else. And there's that, um, like I said, like the fact of um, what was uh, compelling about it is he was talking about freedom, and that, like real freedom is that ability to get away from those negative impulses to yourself, so that you don't live out of addiction to your own bad self kind of thing well yeah anytime you're like, relying on anything sort of you're, right. you're not you're trapped by right it. like some people think of freedom as like the ability to do whatever you want but he said like okay that's not always true because sometimes whatever you want is going to be things that trap yourself because of your own bad decision making right and so like you have to well that's that, only possible when you don't realize what it is you really want like taking right. a job because you think you want it, but realizing that's not really what you're after it was right. certain yeah. emotions that you're not going to get from right. putting yourself in that position right but also not only that aspect of it but the aspect of like um, you are living out of a pathology often when you don't re- and you don't realize it the pathology being like because of some aspect in my life before I always when somebody says a certain word like dismissively I take it as an insult and right. always charge in like well fuck this guy yeah. and now you have well, ruined so I've that heard relationship another guy who's whatever. actually a um, financial planner or whatever but he calls him your script like right. the things that you're basically exactly. your base running program right. like your you money thinking. scripts based on just how you're raised or whatever like this is the way your brain immediately interprets this and it, yeah it's like an input automatically produces this output you stop because thinking, of your scripts you stop rationalizing right. and being honest well, so basically and when it comes down to it you're not deciding yeah, you're reacting. exactly. You're not deciding. So you you're reacting. To, you need to slow the life down and make everything an actually a decision. Right. Like if, you know, when you're training a skill or something, like fighting, you want to get to the point where you're not having to make a decision every time. You're just reacting. But in life, a lot of times that but can be bad if the training wasn't in what you fighting. Even to be. they first train you to break all of your current decisions right. down. You have to get rid erode of erode well, them. That's why a lot of the trainers and will then say start again no with better decisions. Are easier to train the people who have some. In like a shitty Some martial incorrect art because experience. they have the bad scripts already running. Exactly. But they're not really deciding to do that. Right. So that that's a very good. I'm glad that you had that correlation there because that's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. I was talking about like emotional, mental, and psychological like scripts. scripts. I like the term scripts because yeah. it makes sense. So exactly like so because in a web in like his, a coding sense, exactly what they do. His books are like I said, they're mostly religious, so they're not going to be for everybody. Well, they're all religious, but right. uh, they're all from the biblical perspective. But what's interesting about them is that they're all about breaking down your emotional scripts and getting away from them. So right. you're not living trapped, you know, that true freedom comes from being able to go whichever way is the right way in the moment and not being trapped by a script saying, I have to do this and right. I have to do that. Because you can be trapped from by your own brain too. Right. You can be trapped by your own past, your own hangups, your own whatever, right. you know, and like all that kind of stuff. And you can find that it's, it's necessary and, in- to identify that in all aspects of your life. Like I said, sometimes it's money scripts, sometimes it's interpersonal right. relations, like how you right. deal with men and women or leaders or people's right. subordinates, how you deal with them. Yeah, that's a huge money. problem just in all of life is that so much it's, of life is you have, you've been you taught the wrong scripts, scripts to yeah. And at this point, you're not even making it as a conscious decision anymore. You're just, just doing what you're You've developed yeah. that script and now it, it happens. So. Yeah. 
which is crazy. So, well, we didn't really end up going into humor like we said but we would to wrap it, it up. But I think this was meaningful. And, people, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of books out there. That would be the thing I you say to wrap up for today is find whether the Tony Robbins or John Eldridge or any of these other people read something that covers that about. Get away from your yeah. scripts. Exactly. Get away from because like and the guy um, Mike Cernovich from Danger Play calls it being present. Yeah, so like you're there in the moment, yes. making yeah. a decision versus reacting and just right. floating through life with your scripts running. And it's a hard thing to do because then you're it's a slave. Hard thing to it do, is, but you, you know, have to it takes acknowledge it's a conscious effort. Yeah, yeah. To, because like I said, you're you're trying to go against what is now your actual natural instinct, right? To do something, just like you flinch if someone pokes at your eyeball. It's going back to fighting, one of the guys, you're, you're not supposed to close your eyes because then so you have to actually train to be able to keep your eyes open when you're when being punched are in the face. In. Right? Yeah, and uh, that goes against all your natural. Into Instinct, it, like instincts, right. and there's a lot of things that fighting is a very good natural metaphor in a genetic for it. sense, but they're so ingrained that they're natural to you now. And some of right. them will be genetic. Different people have different genetic tendencies, and some right. of them are going to create these scripts and like how they deal with other people, how they deal with stress or money or whatever. Yep. And you have to just make make sure you're making decisions yeah. about it, making an actual decision. Right. So the the first thing, just like in fighting, you sometimes have to do counterintuitive things. Right. You first got to break down your own scripts. Determine what they are so that you right. can destroy them, and then or figure then, out just figure out if they're good or bad. Right. Then you yeah, if they're bad, obviously destroy them. If they're fine, then whatever. Done. But then then you figure out what the real truth is. So that's right. the other hard step is you got to actually learn the truth because you can't build a good script until so you, you know, know what really you should base on. it on. Yeah. So you got to identify know. and eliminate. You like basically try to start from scratch. Identify the things that you're doing automatically right. and make sure you're doing it as a conscious choice. Figure out what actual truth is for whatever arena you're talking about. Right. Then figure out what your goals are for that. Right. And then develop new scripts that. Go towards your goals while recognizing the truth. Because you can right. say these are my goals, but if you're not acknowledging the truth of the situation, you're you're not going to be able to get there because you're going to be butting your head into a wall. Right. Yeah. Saying like exactly. it may not be something that you can do that. And way, that, so. and that again, fighting just parallels this as well because yeah. that doing that in your interpersonal like and life choice ways makes you like the kind of Zen master that fighting always you know like martial arts was always talking about. Right. Where you know you were filled with the void. You don't make. You're you're nothing. You like, are nothing, and you just flow wherever you need to be. The highest form is the no highest form. form is no form. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like you have you don't follow scripts anymore, except the scripts of your own. Because well, that goes, it goes back to the point. Like when you're saying I have a form, that's yeah. a script, and you're saying like, oh, I'm going to throw a punch. You're saying I'm going to do one of these previously trained techniques that I developed. Right. When in real life, like you sort of have to do that in practice for fighting, right? Because you can't just always be consciously thinking about it. But in real life, you don't necessarily want to have to revert to a limited toolbox that you created ahead of time, right? You know what I mean? Well, it's it's, it's about that breaking down tools, and building up because you are you building up your own mastery. You do need a certain set. You of want tools, the tools to be there, but you, but you don't want to say to be I can only I'm only and, using from this toolbox right, right here. You want your tools to be diverse and fluid. Your right. choices to be adaptive and and correct, not rigid and broken. You know? Yeah. You want to say what tools exist in totality and which yeah. ones should I use? Not like what screwdriver should I use? Because right. that's what it I might have. might not be Screw- a screwdriver. That's what necessary. I have is screwdrivers. Yeah. And every problem I get to, I use my screwdrivers. Right. I just yeah. pick which one. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So without getting too far. Too far down the rabbit hole any more than we have. Yeah. We're, We're going to call, call that for it, this and we'll week. we'll see you guys next week. Adios.